Hi, good morning. How are we doing today? Gonna be jumping back into some sketch cards today. Okay, we can go ahead and get started. So I think today, because yesterday I did a lot more rounded shapes, I kind of want to do more hard edges today. Yeah, it's weird, because whenever I start stream, it's always kind of a little bit scuffed. I think it's because my computer is trying to handle it. Like, for the first, like, five, six minutes, everything is a bit laggy. But then after that, it's perfect, for the most part. It's weird.
just going to straighten that line out real quick. Kind of weird, it almost made a star shape. Not intentional.
Okay, so we got a base shape stone. Let's go ahead and erase our guidelines. Kind of feeling yellow for this one. Yellow and gray. Maybe a more light gray, because I kind of want to fill in the implied lines with black. That way it's just solid colors, or solid fills with no outline. Gray's a bit too blue. Maybe that one. Maybe yellow and orange instead. Maybe red. Some warm colors. That red is a bit too bright. You'll need a darker orange now.
Yeah, the reason why I don't want to fill in the black first is because sometimes the tone bells will pick up the black pigment. You can see here, it picked up a little bit of the black, so it did smudge a little.
Okay, so we got those black implied lines infilled now. We're gonna go ahead and touch up some of the more rougher edges. I'm trying to think if this one needs anything else to be added. I think that sounds good. I don't really think there's anything else. So I think this one is... I kind of like the simple... how simple but bold this one looks with the larger fills and then smaller fills. Like this gradient right here. Really nice. And the blockiness of this one. Very nice. I'm honestly really tired today because a couple weeks ago I told myself, oh, I'm gonna bike every day. Because when I was working, I used to bike just about every day to and from work. So it'd be a solid, like, three to four miles round trip to and from work. So um, I was used to biking. And then I biked every day for like four weeks and then my tire went flat. Like, I had a hole in it. So I was like, shoot. So I had to wait for, because my, my dad's pretty handy, so I had to wait for him to like get a new tire and then have that fixed. So it took a week because he was busy, right? And it wasn't priority because it's not like I needed the bike anymore. So after that, I just stopped biking <laughs> and like <laughs> I told myself, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to be good, you know, not eat healthy because I know I can't do that. Like I, I hate vegetables still. But I told myself, I'm going to bike every day. And then I haven't biked for like a month. And then to do because like my sleep schedule is so messed up. Like I'll wake up at six still because I'm I'm so used to waking up early. And then um, I wake up at six, stay in bed till like eight, and then get to work, like my homework and stuff. But I was like, let's try biking again. So I biked today. And this is a trail relatively close to my house, so I did about two miles biking today. It was nice. Exhausted, though. Let's do diagonals for this one. That way it looks a bit more straight. Because when you do lines that are parallel, to your top plane and then your vertical plane or horizontal and vertical plane it automatically will look crooked because the implied lines of the boundaries of your uh, working field will make it look less straight so 
And as I said before, I hate rulers. To me, they feel like a cop out. And plus, I need to practice. I mean, my lines are fairly straight, freehand. That one's pretty solid. I'll see people see how that what I did several strokes to like make a line. But if you just move your wrist or move your elbow down, you get a more straight line. Like I remember one time in a high school art class, my teacher excuse me had like a mini competition like how people go up and like draw a circle or a line on the whiteboard. And I can't remember if I went up or not. I think I did. I think I did. But like people would be drawing circles like this. It's so, like several strokes. It's like, of course it's not gonna make me straight because you're doing like jagged lines. But if you simply just move your elbow or move yeah, see I'm moving my whole like translating my hand, not turning it or rotating, you'll get a more solid, consistent shape. So like if you don't have a stencil or ruler, just guide and translate your whole arm or elbow down. I remember my teacher, he like rotated his whole arm and he was like really tall. So his arms were like super long. So he drew a circle that scaled the whole whiteboard basically. And I was like, wow, how'd you do that? It's like, it's not that hard to grasp. You just move your elbow. Like it's a pretty simple concept. But... The shape kind of looks like a music note almost, a plume. Okay, so we're gonna base lines down. I want to try and keep a consistent width throughout. I think that's what I still have a lot of difficulty in. Or find a lot of difficulty in. Making sure 
all these lines are pretty much parallel to create some consistency. Consistency. Can't talk today. It's also weird because like whenever I exercise I get really sweaty. Like really sweaty and I hate it. Like I just hate the feeling of like dirty. You know like I don't mind doing yard work. Like if I get dirt on my hands I don't care. Because like I know I can wash it off. Like I know when we're going to be done. I know when I can clean it off. Like when you're exercising you're like oh, you don't know like how much longer you're going to go for. You know? Like with biking. So I was out for like 30 minutes to do two miles. Uh, which is kind of slow. But I haven't biked in a while, so like I didn't know how long it's gonna be out. So like I mean I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be sweaty for, and like I don't know if like the bathroom will be available to where I can wash up. Because we are a family of four, and we have two bathrooms, but one of them we can't use because it's filled with junk. Because my parents are borderline hoarders, but you know, that's like Sarah the house, their rules. So like we only have one bathroom that we share. And it's usually not a problem because everyone pretty much has their own schedule. But because my mom, she works for a school. So she's been not working because it's summertime, right? So like they don't have a consistent time to where they gotta use the bathroom. So in my head, I'm like heading home I'm like, ah, please, please let me be able to wash up. I know it seems trivial, but those kind of things really bother me. Like, I absolutely hated gym class. Because, like, I know all the guys, they, they don't care about showering together, but, like, I was so scared. Like, just changing in the locker room. I mean, like, I wasn't, like, self-conscious or anything. I think I was more worried about, like, my things being taken. I don't know. Because, like, you can't really have cameras in the locker room, so if someone steals something, you're kind of screwed. Like, it's harder to find out who did it. I mean, the most valuable thing I had would be my cell phone, which at the time was a blackjack that I had in junior high. <laughs> Not a blackberry, a blackjack. That my dad got for five bucks at a garage sale. And I used that black job up until high school to where I saved my money, like money I got from like Christmas and birthdays and stuff, to where I could buy my own Samsung S5. That was my first smartphone that was like mine, mine. And I had that up until under three years ago, and then I got an S9. I mean, by then after school. Because, like, when I was in high school, I volunteered at a daycare for, like, two hours, two, three hours after school every day. So, I, I looking back, I should have got on a job, because I, I contributed, like, 100 hours to that specific center. And, like, they couldn't pay me, because I wasn't 18, because they couldn't have anyone underage on staff. Looking back, I should have just gotten a job. But I've had a lot more money now. I say that, but, like, I probably would have spent it. I mean, even if you're in like 200 bucks a month, that's a lot when you're a kid, you know? And I didn't drive, so like, I didn't have to pay for a car or anything. Like, I could have just like, gone coffees every morning. Because <laughs> coffee costs you like 10 bucks every day now, you know? I'm debating whether or not I should do blue or green for this one. Ugh, I hate- I still haven't figured out why that blue green is coming up. I need to- I figured out that it's an issue with my camera capture card. So I'm waiting on a new one to come in to see if that'll help. Or I'm waiting for a hardware to come in. Or to I get the core to set up at home. To where I can use like a different capture software. So I can still use what I have now. But that's not come in for a couple days. So hopefully that blue-green will be gone. <laughs> so I 
guess we won't be using blue today. We'll keep on using everything else but. And like, there's no information online that's like cohesive on how to fix the issue. It's so frustrating. Okay, so what I'm planning on doing is filling in the larger gaps with like rounded rectangles. You know, I just realized, cause I, I don't take showers or baths in the morning, so like I'm not used to that routine yet. I forgot to put under on it. I'll be right back. Little bit TMI, but I don't care. Like, <laughs> another thing about locker rooms, like, I hated how, like, everyone had their perfumes and stuff. Because when I was younger, I was asthmatic. Like, I had the inhaler and everything. So, like, just in general, I'm really sensitive to certain more, like, floral scents. I don't know if I have, like, an actual allergy, but, like, a lot of fl floral perfumes will. There's one time I remember in sixth grade, I was, because we'd sit in the auditorium before class would start, right? Like in, in your, your classroom line, like just crisscross applesauce on the floor. And I was in the front of the line that day. And there was a teacher that walked past me, and I almost passed out because her perfume was really strong, and it was this weird floral scent. But yeah, so another reason why I had little locker rooms because everyone had their stupid perfumes. And there's nothing you can really do about it. Because the teacher would be like, oh, try and spray it close to your body, but can't really help it, you know? Like, even now, I'm still sensitive to certain smells, like whenever I paint. Um, there's also, um, sometimes I make stencils. It's where you use, like, um, a hot wood burning tool to melt plastic, which is kind of toxic. But, you know, you just gotta make sure you have the window open and fans on. So now, like, I'll wear just a facial mask and I feel relatively better and fine. Like, I wish masks were a thing long ago. Like, they're so nice, dude. I love them. Or not necessarily I love them. It's just, like, they're really convenient. I think it's also funny because when I was working in food, you'd have regulars that would come in like every day or every other day. And when we'd have the mask on, they'd be like, oh, how do you recognize me? But it's like, it's like, so you usually have your same work uniform. I can still see your eyes and like your head. 
and your body, like your your body form. Like I, I can still tell too. Like your nose and your mouth are not your most distinguishing features, you know. I always found that funny. Like there's one time, I had uh, a lift ride, and I was walking up to the car, right? And the driver was like, "Hey." Why do you have your mask on? He didn't have his mask on, mind you. Um, he's like, why don't you have it on? I was like, or why do you have it on? I was like, well, I need to have it on. And he's like, I can't, can't tell who you are. It's like, that's not, it's not the point. Like, <sighs> that, that person just <laughs> really annoyed me so much. My God. Like, that person obviously didn't get it. That's fine. They'll understand at some point, right? Yeah, my sister and I were not replaying, but playing Ghost of Tsushima together. And because we played it initially when it came out, but then we both kind of got bored of it. Because when I was playing, uh, if anyone has played it, or my game style in general is like I have to get every single item, I have to check every single nook and cranny. Because like I'm a hoarder in games, so like, I gotta get every single item. And. <laughs> if you're familiar with the map at all, it, it's split into two sections, three sections, right? Because there's three main story arcs, so like it has the main island, and then it connects to a larger half, and then, so this is one, two, three for each story arcs, right? So I, I, at almost full completion, has finished the first part of the island, and then, because I didn't know you could zoom out the map, I accidentally zoomed out, and I saw that there was two others, two other parts... <laughs> And, oh my god, I was so upset, because I was like, I thought it was almost done. I mean, I knew there was three story arcs, like WB, I knew there was two more arcs, but I did not realize that there was, like, basically two big-ass sections left to complete. And I just sat there, because I thought I'd already invested maybe 20 cumulative hours? I don't know how long the whole gameplay is, I don't, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, was, I did, like, literally every side mission. I got every single collectible in that first part of the island. And, like I said, I zoomed out. And I was just like, screw it. Like, I can't. At that point, like, I was kind of, like, burnt out. Because the gameplay was really, really repetitive. I should have kept playing because a lot of the mechanics change. And the difficulty. We played on easy mode because we're not gamers, right? I should have. I should have kept playing. But we finished it yesterday. And did... 10 out of 10. Would play again. I need to play again. Because definitely for me, combat type games are really difficult because I get kind of overwhelmed playing games sometimes because it's, it's, it's too much to like handle. Like, like you gotta figure out like controls, you gotta translate what button do I need to press now, you know? We finished it yesterday. Very good. Definitely would recommend. I also really like pretty games. Like, if a game doesn't look good, then to me, I can't justify playing it for hours on end, you know? Because I, I personally really appreciate the production value of, of things. Because you think about, like, how much work, time, and effort went into producing a project. And those kind of things, like, I suggest you get me emotional. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so I think I've added any rectangle elements that I want to add. So I think... I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring. So I think what I want to do is alternate filling with a color for the large bars. Uh, for example here, fill the edge with black inside with color and then for the alternating one do the opposite. So do the edge with color and then the inside blocks black. A little bit of alternating. I think that would look pretty. And then maybe add some white highlights in, maybe. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with color first. So I also need to take in consideration any parts that I botched. Like here, how see how that line is see how it clips right there? I'm gonna probably fill in this bar with black. So I need to keep that in mind when I color. And see how also these aren't properly lined up. It'll also kind of correct that. See how that line is really curvy, that implied line from those edges? It'll kind of straighten those out too. Yeah, I think nowhere else really clips. Everything else looks fine. I'm gonna color that in so I don't forget what I'm coloring in with black. So that stroke. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in with our green. Yeah, so we finished Ghost of Tsushima because me and her, we went through mainly the story missions and then saved the side missions for last because we didn't want to get burnt out again, right? So we might go back and finish off the side missions, but we're going to be playing the story mode for GTA 5 next together. I know that like the GTA 5 roleplay was a big meta. It was a because when I first started watching Twitch in like, January, December ish, November, it was kind of more popular then. Like, I couldn't really get into it, honestly. Like I found it kind of boring. But I know it's still a really big thing on Twitch right now. Because as I said before, like. I think the first streamer I watched like consistently on the platform had to be Ludwig, and that was back in like November, December. And then I got really into Hassan in January. I watched his content like off and on in like November, December, but like after like January 6th coverage, I was like, oh, kinda gotta give him a follow now. But I was watching some of the testimonials that were released this previous week from four of the officers who were on site during the um, insurrection and like I honestly cried watching those videos because to me just seeing any type of like mass destruction or pain is it affects me a lot especially when it could have been indirectly prevented or could have, proactive action could have been taken. Not saying that I don't want to get political. Like, I'm very much like, I'll talk about anything. But. I just don't want anyone to get upset by the things I say. Because I think politics in general just all comes down to perspective. Like, you're going to want to care... Or invest money and time in issues that directly affect you, right? Like, if you're a city person, you're not necessarily going to have as much attention or care towards more like more rural issues, right? Like farmers and stuff, because you don't you don't have that perspective. You don't understand that dynamic because you don't live it.
But now that I'm a bit older, I definitely want to hear new perspectives. Like, I love watching media and articles from all different angles or sides. Because then you get to, you get a better understanding of why they think the way they think, you know. I was talking to my sister about it last week and I jokingly said, like, you know how people will like openly put like, oh, BLM, gay rights, you know, in their bio, which is good. Bringing awareness and activism, that's not activism, but bringing awareness is really good. And I was like, you know, <laughs> what if people just proudly put like, ooh, I'm a racist or I'm against equal rights in their bio? <laughs> like how fast would they get fired, you know? Because <laughs> employers, they look at your social media. If everything is public, they can see it. And it's so easy to find. Like, all they have to do is save your phone number to their contacts. And if that phone number is linked to your accounts, then you can easily find it and see it. Granted, I, I understand that's why people have sock accounts now. But even then, just don't post stuff that you don't want other people to see. Because, like, it's going to be there forever. You know, keep that in mind whenever you post anything. That's why, like... I don't ever want to have, like, a sock account to post my hot takes or, like, cringe content. Because, like, it's still tied back to me. Like, even if I put a, a fake alias, it can still be leaked at some point, you know? That's why, like, I try and keep the commentary or comments to a minimum. Like, if you talk to me IRL, like, I'll be honest about stuff. Like, I don't care about talking to my, about my opinions too much as long as you like as long as i'm respectful and then you treat me with that same respect like i'll be willing to open up as much as either of us would want to you know yeah all right back i forgot that my sharpie is dying so i gotta grab another one from my closet so brb Now, back. We have a new. Oh, you didn't see it. You didn't see it. We have a new. Crisp. Clean. It's not going to focus, but it's a new Sharpie. I love and hate Sharpies sometimes. Because, like, the chips go dull easily. Even if you use, like, the side of the tip, they still die fairly quickly if you're using them all the time. Which makes sense. Thinking about it. I mean, I still love them. I'm actually gonna straighten out these ones first before I go in. Right now, I'm just going in, straightening some edges that were kind of crooked. That weren't drawn as straight as I could have. Straightened out any rough edges. Just 
go ahead and start filling in. Another thing about sock accounts, like, any of your friends who know your sock account, they know you. Like, there might be a time where you really piss them off and they're like, <gasps> gonna leak! You know. I used to have a Snapchat back in high school, and I only had it for like a month. The only reason I got it was because one of my friends, they only used Snapchat to dog, like they didn't use Messenger or anything. So I downloaded it just so I could talk to them. And like, I would just be posting, like, on my stories, like, how sad I was all the time. And looking, like, at the time I was like, this is not healthy. Like, not everyone needs to know how sad I am, you know? So I stopped, I deleted it. <laughs> I never re-downloaded it. <laughs> I definitely want to try and keep, like, the mood up. I don't ever really want to talk about things that are too sad or depressing. Because there, there are things that, not that they shouldn't be talked about, but you have to be comfortable enough to talk about it. Because like, as I said earlier, like, everything on the internet basically stays there. So you don't want to say anything that you don't really want to take back, you know? Another thing that people need to understand is just because you have Americans, mind you, Americans, just because you have the freedom of speech doesn't mean you can say whatever you want. Now you get to be able to understand the weight of your actions and your words and how that will not only affect you, but any future endeavors or choices you may have. Like back to like posting things in your bio, right? You can post that you're pro LGBTQ. That's cool. It's great. Post your pronouns. That's amazing. You know, bring more awareness to it. But some people may not like that. That's okay. Like an employer might not like that. Not like might not like that. Might not like that. But if they don't hire you for that reason, then maybe you shouldn't be there. Like if they're not going to support that, maybe that's just a little saying they're not going to support or contribute to a good environment, you know? That's just my take. Like, I know I've been discriminated in the past. Um, I personally am Asian, Hispanic. 
I think I look more Hispanic than Asian. Everyone else tells me otherwise. Because I have really small eyes. Not really small, but like just the way the curvature is very small. And like, I know I've been discriminated in the past. And like, that's fine. Like, I'm just trying to let it stuff bother me too much. Especially this past year. Like, my mom. She's, um, Japanese. She was really scared of going out. With all the... The rise in Asian hate crimes. She was really scared. It's kind of scary to think about. Well, it's still like this in America, you know. Like all the quote unquote progress we've made in the past hundred years, the negative sentiments and feelings are still there. Maybe one day we'll get over it, you know. Go scuff this paper is so so many lines. The idea I had for this scrap paper, because it's on cardstock as well, is once it's like filled to cut it up and then use it as a background for cards. But looking at it, how are you gonna make a composition out of this? It could just be a background. We'll see. Dude, I can't get over how <laughs> nice my nails are. <laughs> Honestly can't. I've never gotten my nails, like, formally done in, like, a salon. I've always wanted to, but I never really liked, like, the temporary aspect of, like, pedicures or anything. Like, I can't picture myself spending $50 every week on that, you know? Because to me, that's a luxury. It's not a necessity. Like, I'm gonna go out to lunch first and get my nails done, you know? I'm gonna have to touch up these rectangles at the end, because they're not as rounded as they could be. Oh, I almost clipped there. That would have been sad. Cool. So we have baselines done. Kind of looks like a circuit board almost. The pattern. Kind of matching the beep boop <laughs> music theme, you know? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and touch up a few of these rectangles down here and see if any other edges need adjusting.
Okay, just double checking. As to these edges. Okay, I think all the edge is nice and rounded now. I wish I had colored gel pens. Right now I just have white, gold, and silver. Maybe gold might look good. I don't know, kind of feeding it to that circuit board look. We can go ahead and try gold, see how that will look. Mind you, I haven't used these gold ones yet. Because my mom, she's fairly crafty and artsy as well. She had these gel pens that are like 15 years old. And I tried using them and didn't last very long, you know. I'm just going to go ahead and grab those same colors again and test out how they will look. So that's the green. Then our black. It's mostly opaque. You can't really see the shimmer on camera, but they're like a little bit. See right here. Maybe. Maybe doing like the inner rectangles, like an, like an inner outline. Ooh, you can see that shine there. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, let's do that. So I think the white would stand out too much. But this gold kind of, like I said, goes back to that circuit board look. The other thing I really don't like about like pigmented or metallic gel pens is they usually take, see like a long time to dry, I already clip some. You have to be very careful when you're working. I know there's like clear like finishing spray you can put on your paintings and stuff, but I don't have any because I don't usually paint. I usually just work with pen 2D. But we are gonna do some painting tomorrow. And I'm debating whether or not to do like brush and pen. Or because I have these acrylic paint pens that I got recently and I wanna try those out too. Yeah, don't clip, don't clip. I was just not done that on my 
background paper because it's gonna smear everywhere now. Sorry. I don't know about y'all, but when I work, like, I'm so hunched over my desk, like, especially when I'm drawing, like, I have my face, like, two inches away <laughs> from the card right now. <laughs> I got to be really close to what I'm working on. I don't know if it's an issue of, like, my sight. I do wear glasses. Should have been wearing them since I was kindergarten, but I got them in seventh grade. No, eighth grade. But... I work really close to my table. Yeah, they're not as noticeable on the green. That's because it's such a light hue. I already have the pigment all over my fingertips, my finger pads. Okay, so I added the gold accents to the smaller rectangles i think i kind of want to add like them here as well in the larger rectangle gaps maybe maybe that might be too busy not sure i think this one is good for now if i want to add more accents i think I will add them later, but I think this one is done. Cool. That one took a solid 40 minutes. Uh-oh. Oh, we got time for one more today. So I want to try and go for two hours every day. Don't want to go for too long. Okay, what should we do for this one? Let us think. Go ahead and start with this type of shape. Of 
going to have that natural curvature. Okay, the idea I have for this one is doing triangles throughout this. And then on every flat face have a triangle going out, something like this. You'll see a lot of my more abstract patterns will start with a stroke. So like just a simple line through the canvas. The working plane. Then maybe doing... So I'm going to go ahead, instead of doing flat edges, I'm going to follow that curvature instead. So I want to try and keep a more acute angle on the top points because see how near the curvatures 
There are wider triangles. That way I don't get any triangles that will be have like obtuse angles on the points. Because I think one of the more important elements of doing like more abstract or pattern work is consistency in terms of like consistent angles, consistent widths, depths, shapes. Because that's what pattern is, a repeating image or concept, right? the so same thing. Make sure I have a cute angle at the point. I'm also trying to maintain a consistent width between this implied line. And I'm also doing, I'm skipping a triangle here because you know that was going to be smaller in between. I don't want to draw that one first because you want to not interfere with the next larger triangle. I still don't understand how people can draw with like their paper taped to the table. Like whenever you draw like that, you're going to be moving your wrist and your hands more. But here, I'd rather move my paper and then move my hand in a similar way than trying to twist my wrist around because you're not going to get as fluid movement, you know? So yeah, I, I, I don't understand how they do it. Like, it has to hurt their wrists after a while, you know? Ooh, that's gonna clip! That's gonna clip! Very close. I should have drawn that one smaller. That's okay, we didn't clip. That's why when you're working, you have to... Always, like, stink, think a step ahead. With your strokes. You don't want to make them too... Extreme. You know, see how there's a big gap there? Don't like that. Like, I should have done this one at a higher angle. Kind of like here, how I did the opposite ones first. I should have done these two first. Because see how those are pointing in different directions? That's okay, too late, too late. It's a minor error. In the grand scheme of things, like I'm the only one who's gonna notice it or take it personally.
I think it's also important whenever you're drawing not to take like mistakes too seriously. I think it's more important to look at like how you've improved. Because there's like little five-year-olds who are so proud of their drawings, you know? Because they know that it's better than their last. So I think whenever I do like a project, I always think like, oh, this looked good. This didn't look good. But I still acknowledge that there are aspects of that I like, you know? That way, because you don't want to be too critical on yourself. Especially now when... Seeing other people's art is so much more accessible than before. We had to go like galleries or shows. Like, I always appreciate whenever I do get a compliment, if they point out a specific as aspect. I'll be like, oh, that shape is really nice, or that motion is really cool. You know, like, versus just saying, ooh, it's nice. Like, if, if you point out a specific thing about someone else's work, it shows that you're actually analyzing, looking at it, and paying attention to what they're doing, you know? I'm kind of feeling red on this one. So you think the red is a bit bright? A bit more dull red? Yeah, I think that one's a bit better. See, now I'm debating because I want to do either red inside black outer triangles or vice versa so black inside or red because I kind of want to keep the background white I think the black would stand out a lot more if it were on the outside triangles rather than the interior ones so I'm going to go ahead and color the interior ones red Because this red is dark enough to where you can barely see the black outline of it. This is a bit more of a dull, muted red.
I did clip a little here. I was literally just about to say how careful it has to be when you're coloring in. Then I clip. Big sad. It's another reason why I like I find it so difficult to talk. Cause so much of like my energy is going towards just concentrating. Like I'm probably like ADD, honestly. So we got the red filled in. Nice. It's kind of cool with the tips weight. Another thing you'll see whenever I fill in, like I said earlier, I, I cannot tape my paper down to the my table. Like I will try and run the tip of my pen along the right edge of a stroke. That way I can see tip of my pen following that line, you know? Because if I try and do it from like this way, see how I'm trying to fill in this line? 
I try and do this way, the back of the tip blocks it. It's little things like that will help you give more accurate strokes and lines. Like, you don't really think about it. And like, I do it without thinking about it. Like, I have little... It's the little things. The little things. That's why I love doing traditional art a lot more than digital. Granted, I haven't touched digital art in ages. Like, I haven't used my Wacom in, like, a year now. Unless I have to for, like, a project. But even then, I do it begrudgingly. Okay, so now I'm gonna fill in any of the white edges that I missed. I'm also going to cover up that red spot I missed because it's still, this white gel isn't as opaque as it could be. I also clipped here earlier that I missed, I got to cover up. There we go. A lot better. I mean, I know you can't see it, but I can see it and it bothers me. Everything is filled in now. Definitely have more of a simple vibe going today. Not as detailed as other times. I think what would be interesting is if I filled in with like just a simple triangle line with it. Can make it split up to look look like it's two like arrows. Might have to grab another one of my gel pens. Cause this one is definitely not probably running out of juice. Yeah, something like that. See how that adds a little bit more detail, and then maybe thicken it out a little. Just gotta be extra careful not to clip. See how just that little bit more detail adds a lot. 
That's the thing I like about abstract, is you can build off of one simple concept. Let me just see where it goes. Maybe I could try picking it out like the width of these red rectangles. Let's give that a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my ultra fine sharpies to the micron to get a little bit more. A thicker edge stroke rather see let's look at the difference see right here top corner Yeah, because the thicker edge makes it look heavier, almost.
Okay, so we went ahead and thickened in the black lines for the inner red red heels. And I think it looks good. Don't want to add too much. Definitely feeling a little bit of simple vibes today. Let's go ahead and re review what we did. I'm gonna go to a less busy page. Kind of like this little almost star shape. And next, green and black, the gold accents. And finally, what we just finished, the spiky curve. Cool. So I think that's all of the time I got for today. Thank you for checking and tuning in. And I'll be back tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. PST. And we're going to be doing acrylic. Still deciding whether or not I want to do... Because I got mini canvases ranging from 4x4 four four to 2... No, 3x3. Three three. And debating whether or not I still want to do like actual acrylic. Definitely still going to follow the abstract theme. Because I did not how to know how to shade with paint. Um, yeah, so still thinking about whether or not I want to try out my new acrylic paint pens. Or go with the standard acrylic. So, it's a plan for tomorrow. Cool. Well, you guys have a great day. Bye.